octal. Octal is base 8, the allowed digits are 0 through 7, and then we have some place values. So for our place values, remember it's always the base uh, taken to the power of how far you are from the ones place. So 8 to the 0 is ones, 8 to the 1 is the 8's place, 8 to the 2 is the 64's place, 8 to the 3 is the 512's place, and 8 to the 4 is the 4096th place. We're not going to be using that one much. <coughs> All right, converting octal to decimal. You multiply each digit by its place value, then sum the results. So the directions are always the same for these. All right, so this is 4, 7, 5. We have the 1's place, the 8's place, and the 64's place. So 4 times 64 is 256. 7 times 8 is 56. And now we have 5 times 1 is 5. Then all we do is sum these up. So that's 12, 5, 17. So you get 7, 1. We get 11. Carry a 1. We get 317 in decimal. So 4, 7, 5 in octal is 317 in decimal. This number is going to be a little bit easier to run over here. So 2, 3, 4. We have 4 in the 1s, a 3 in the 8, and a 2 in the 64s. <coughs> 2 64s is 128. And then we have 3 times 8, 24, with 4 1s left. We add these up together, we get 16, we do our carry, and we end up with 156. So 2, 3, 4 is 156 in decimal. When we go from decimal to octal, the rules are highly similar to what we did from decimal to binary. Find the first place value that is larger than your number. Move right one place. Check to see if the place value is smaller than your number. If it's not, write a zero. If it is, write down how many times the place value goes into that number. Next, reduce your number by the number you wrote down, which is the value that you put in the place, times the place value. And this will, if the wording's a little bit weird, it'll make sense on the uh, next slide. So whatever you write down, you have some number, you reduce your number the number you're trying to represent. You reduce that number by the place value times the digit you just wrote. So let's look, and then you repeat steps two and three until you've reached the one place. So let's go look at an example and see how this is done. <clears throat> so if I wanted to represent 402, that's going to start getting fairly complicated. So you'd write down, would I need a one? Yeah, I'd need a one. Um, eight. 64, 512. Would I need any 512s? No. So we go to 64. How many 64s would we need? Um, see, 320 would be five of them. So six. Six would represent, let's see. So that would be three. 84, I believe, because I did 5 times 64, that gave me 320, plus an extra 64 got me to this point. Now I'm going to subtract that out, so when I do, I go ahead and I borrow, and I get 8. Can't do this math, so you borrow. This will go up to an 11. This guy's going to have to go down to a 3. So <clears throat> there was a difference of 38. How many 8s? are in 38. Well, 4, that would get you 32. So you subtract off 32, and you get there 6 left, and you would need 6 ones. So 402 in decimal would be 646 in octal. So that's our base right there. All right, let's do 178. That one should be much easier to run. So, do we need a 1? 
but not do we need it one, sorry, one, eight, 64, five twelves. Nope, we don't need any five twelves. So two sixty fours would be needed. So one, seven, eight, minus our two sixty fours would be one twenty eight. Zero five. So <clears throat> six eights can go into fifty, and that makes forty eight. So forty eight we subtract that out, we get two ones are left over. So our final answer is 262 base 8. When you add an octal, every time you reach the base, which is 8, you carry. So here we have 11. How many 8s are in 11? 1. With 3 left over. 5, 6, 7, 8. How many 8s are in 8? 1, with none left over. And here we have 6, so when we add these two numbers, you get 603 in base 8. Here, we want to add over here. <coughs> 2 and 4 make 6, that's a valid number. 9 is not a valid number, that's not a digit we're allowed. So there's 1 8 there, with 1 left over. 7. And base 8, and we're done with that. Subtracting. Anytime you subtract, when you borrow, you're going to get an 8 because you always gain the base. 6 minus 5, we can do that. 1. 5 minus 2, we can do that. We get 3. 4 minus 1, we can do that. We get 1. That example is kind of boring. We better borrow in the next one, otherwise I'm going to have to make a new example. All right. Ooh, look, we get to borrow. <coughs> 2 minus 4, can't do it. This goes down to a 2. When we borrow, we go up to 10, because we gained 8. 10 minus 4, 6. 2 minus 2, nothing. And 7 minus 4, 3. Let's make this 6 look a little bit better. And there we have it. We finished our subtracting. Hexadecimal. <coughs> Hexadecimal is kind of weird, because you have six, the base is 16. That means your allowed digits are 0 to 15. But 15 is not a digit. It's actually two digits. So we kind of ran out of numbers. So what we start using is letters. A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. And then let's look at the place values. 16 to the 0 is the 1's place. 16 to the 1 is the 16's place. 16 to the 2 is the 256th place. 16 to the 3, again, is that crazy number, 4,096, but we don't, we're hoping not to have to use that. <coughs> Hexadecimal to decimal. Again, it's the same rules as before. Multiply each digit by its place value, sum the results. So our place values are 1, 16, 2, 5, 6. The... The math for this stuff's a little bit rougher. 1, A, D. 1, 256. A, 16s. A is a 10. So 10 times 16. And if you can't remember what they are, write them out. So on your problem, say, oh yeah, well, A starts at 10. B goes to 11. I'm not, I'm going to try not to write these out on the next slide. But... Just in case you forgot, let's go ahead and get these down. 13, E is a 14, and F is a 15. So all, what we really have here is 10 times 16, so 160. Then you're like, D1s? I don't know what a D is. So you look at your little chart that you write down on your side, 13 times 1. And maybe for the next slides I'll go ahead and write that down. Makes it easier for me and also easier for y'all since y'all learning this stuff. So now we're adding these numbers because we know they're decimal values now. So this is a 9. It's a 12. So you get 429. If you want to know what 1 AD is, it's 429 in decimal. All right, let's look at our next one. We're going to have a 1's place again. We're going to have a 16's place again. And we're going to have a 256 place again. 
I didn't think that went out. <clears throat> 2, F, 4. 2, 256s, is 512. So that wasn't that bad. And then F times 16. Well, that's 15 16s. 16 16s would be 256. You have one less 16 than that. So 240, I believe. And then we have a 4. Sorry, this is kind of at the ruffled edge of the slide, so it doesn't look real pretty. But let's go ahead and add this up. We would get a 6, a 2, and a 4 make 6. 5, this would be 756 in decimal system. Alright, moving on. Decimal to hex. This is the same rules that we did in octal. You go through, find the first thing that's big or too big, then you start going to the right. If the place value is uh, bigger than your number, you write a zero. If it's smaller than your number, you write down how many times that place value can be put into your number, and then you reduce your number. So let's go ahead and get it done. <coughs> if we want to know what 402 in hex is, we'd start off and we'd say, well, 1, 16, uh, 256, and then 4096. You don't have to remember, but you can clearly see you'd only need one of those. So we put down we need 1, 256. So 402 minus 2, 5, 6. You have to borrow. You can't borrow, so you borrow from this guy. This guy goes to a 3. I should have wrote a little bigger. This guy goes to a 10. Then we borrow from him. He goes to a 9. This guy goes to a 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. I'm going to start writing bigger. And then we got 4. <coughs> and a 1. 146. How many 16s can go into 146? I don't know. Um, 10 16s would be 160. One less than that would be 144. So 9 of them can go in. And giving us a total of 144. If we take 144 off of 146, we get 2. There are two ones left. And that would be 192 in hexadecimal is equivalent, sorry, is the same as one as 402 in decimal. Let's do 178. Hopefully 178 is not as stressful. 1, 16, 256. We don't need a 256, so we're just working in this area. We already know that... <coughs> Um, 10 16s would be 160. One more 16 would get us to 176. So we need 11 of these guys. So we need B of them. So 1, 7, 8. B 16s, or 11 16s, would make 176, giving us 2 left over. And then we just write our 2 over here, and we're good. B 2. B 2 in hex equals the number 178 in decimal. Alright, <clears throat> now we're going to go through and add in hex. So I'm going to write this stuff down on the side again, and I'm going to do it on both these slides. So A is 10, B is 11, just so we can remember this stuff, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. So when they say 6 plus C, what they really mean is 12. That makes 18. How many 16s are in 18? One 16 with two left over. A is a 10. D is a 13. 10 plus 13 is 23, plus one more, 24. How many 16s are in there? One with eight remaining. And then we have a 6 here. And our answer is still in base 16. All right, C is a 12, F is a 15, 15 plus 12 is 27. There's one 16 there with 11 left over. So 27, there's a 16 there with 11 left over. Yeah, 
<clears throat> so c is a 12, now we're at 13, we're at 19. That's 1 16 with 3 left over. Here we have 10, 11, 15. So 15 is f. Now let's go ahead and do subtraction. All right, a, a is a 10. So let's write this stuff out real quick. We'll do it on the side again. A, 10, B, 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. A minus 5, easy to do, 5. A minus F, can't do it, so we borrow. This guy goes down to a 9, this is an 11, so, sorry, this guy's a 10, he gains 16, putting him at 26. 26 minus 15 is 11b. 9 minus 1 is 8, and our answer is in base 16. All right, let's go over here, can't do it, can't do it, we gotta borrow. This guy goes up to an 8, this guy goes to a 17 when he went up, but that guy needed to borrow as well. Oh, we're chain borrowing. Um, here, let me let me erase this. I skipped some steps. I got ahead of myself. I didn't mess it up, but I just got ahead of myself, and I need to work slowly. So pin, we're going to borrow 1 minus 4. We're going to have to borrow 0. This guy goes up to a 17. 17 minus 4, 13 which we know is D. 0 minus 2, you can't do it, so you borrow. This guy goes down to a 9, this guy goes to a 16. 16 minus 2, 14, otherwise known as E. 9 minus 4 is 5, and then we put our base, which, sorry, this was supposed to say base 16. When I copied my slides, I messed that up. Base 16, and our result is in base 16. All right, moving on to the next slide. I wonder if that mess... Nope, got them right on that slide. All right. <clears throat> Doing math with bases. Convert everything to base 10. This is going to be the easy way to do it. Do the math in base 10, and then convert your result to... Convert to result base if needed. So if we had to add these two numbers, there's no... There is actually a quick way to do that, and I go over, I go that, over that in the chapter. Um... So if you search the chapter text, or if you read through the chapter text, you'll find some tricks to speed this stuff up. But I'm going to do this the slow way. So I'm going to say this is a 1, this is a 2, this is a 4, this is an 8, this is a 16, this is 16, a 4, and a 1. So that's in base 10, we have 21. FA, 15 16s is 240 plus 10. So 15 16s, 240. And then A is a 10, so A1s, so plus 250, because it's 240 plus 10. We add these together, we get 271, and that's in base 10. If we wanted to know what the answer, if we were supposed to select our answers and one of our answer choices was binary, and we did not see 271 listed as an answer choice, we'd convert 271 to binary. Or if we needed to check to see what its octal value is, we could convert 271 to octal. This is a little bit slower of a way, but there should only be one uh, question like this, or maybe in a really weird scenario, two questions on the AP test. There's a lot of time for you. We can easily convert both to base 10, do our math, and convert to whatever base we need. Alright, that's it.